Bruce Costas has been practicing karate for even longer than I have, and the two of us have so much in common, I'm shocked we haven't run into each other before. In this long, fun conversation, we talk about all the ways martial arts training makes us happier, healthier, saner, and safer. And spend a little time on the irony that almost none of it has to do with kicking or punching people. If you haven't yet, please hit like and subscribe. You'd be surprised how much that helps. While you're at it, tell your friends, find us on Instagram and Facebook, and even back us on Patreon, where you can get early access and other goodies for just a few bucks a month. Thanks for being here today. Now let's get to work. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Safest Family on the Block, where knowledge is power. I'm your host, Jason, and joining me today is Bruce Costa. Hello, Bruce. Welcome. Hey, how are you, sir? Pleasure to be here. So glad to have you on. Now, Bruce is the author of Welcome to Karate, Unlocking the Wisdom of the Beginner's Mind, published by YMAA and available right about now, if you're watching this in October of 2022 or 2021. And if you're watching it after that, it's also available at Amazon. Now, this book was for beginning karate students is meant to make the challenging practice inviting to newcomers. It's received written praise from dozens of the author's mentors and includes a foreword by Grandmaster Teruyuki Okazaki himself, under whom Costa has trained since 1980. Costa is also a passionate teacher, successful entrepreneur, professional speaker, a student of mindfulness meditation in the tradition of Zen master Thich Nhat Hanh, under whom he has studied since 2007. Costa has worked in, presented to, and consulted for various manufacturing, publishing, distribution, and retail industries throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe, he has authored over 250 magazine column installments, feature articles, interviews, book reviews for a variety of magazines, newspapers, and other periodicals. You can read his work and learn more about him at BruceCosta.com. He continues to live in the boulder-strewn Pennsylvania forest where his children were raised, all three of whom are Shotokan black belts, graduates of elite universities, successful professionals, and happy. So kind of a scoreboard there on parenting for the last one. So I'm really excited to have you on. We started talking about it because of the new book that's coming out. And turns out we have a great deal in common about our approach to martial arts and approach to how martial arts can infuse parenting in a meaningful way. Mm -hmm. And when we want to start that conversation off with what does, what does karate have to do with children? I think in, in Western society, especially in North America, there are a lot of adults who think karate is that thing they did as a kid or karate is that thing it's that you, know, you check off the list with their little league and their piano lessons, right? But it goes so much deeper. Jason, I, you know, <laughs> and, and <laughs> I count myself in the extreme opposite camp. I, I didn't start training until I was at university uh, and I had two credits to burn and I walk in and there standing before me is the person whom I would later learn is respected throughout the world. Uh, Sensei Okazaki came to the United States uh, in 1961 and uh, tasked with the job of spreading the faith as it were. And what chance was there that I would walk in uh, as a Bruce Lee fan in 1980 <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> have anything whatsoever to get to do with this great man? And uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. During our conversation, we'll discuss many of the pearls that he dropped that enabled me to, in many ways, walk the path that I have. Um, I'm just so grateful for his guidance and, uh, and to have been a part of his life. We lost him to COVID early in 2000, and uh, that, was a, um, that was an event that resonated throughout the world, and uh, we all... We, I, I know we've, you know, for those of us who knew him and knew not only his impossible martial arts skill, and I don't say that lightly. In fact, I'm a, I'm a skeptic. There's a lot of dogmatism and nonsense in, in, our, in our craft, right? What I care about is what works. And <laughs> I'm telling you, even at that threshold, what he was able to do, it was unbelievable put all that aside for a moment. It was his charm and good grace and easy smile and ability to bring this concept that mm -hmm. if he could do it, I could do it. And now I spend my life saying that to my students, for the love of God, if Bruce Costa can put on a black belt, <laughs> 
I mm. promise you the day will come where you feel, you know, slightly past the awkwardness that I once felt. And, um, and indeed, I've been able to do things that my younger self would never have dreamed I'd be able to do. And, and it's his example. I'm, I'm glad you bring it up. But uh, listen, I'm, um, I, I want to hurry up and say that I'm really happy to be a part of your important work. Uh, I think that your podcast makes a contribution to the world that, um, that makes it a better place and makes it uh, a place that we all want to live in. And I, I just need to send some, some sunshine up your skirt before we, before we go any further, because it's just, uh, it's just good work that you do. So I'm, I'm really delighted and humbled to be on. Um, so that's, that's that so kind preamble. of you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so with that preamble, um, mm -hmm. to answer yeah. your question, you know, when I was training, you know, I was one of the many uh, of my colleagues who, I mean, none of us ever tested. I spent four years as a purple belt, seven years as a mm -hmm. brown belt, always thinking I wasn't ready to test, whatever testing was in my mind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I just trained hard and wanted my stay, my, my body to, you know, we don't, we don't get to do karate. We have to earn karate. Mm -hmm. We have to, you have to, you have to create the body capable of karate. And these kinds of mentalities are, are what lets us bring the lessons of karate into the real world and make us better people. So with that mindset, when people started telling me they wanted their children, I mean, I made my children do it, don't get me wrong, but I was, I was a freak, you know, absolutely unreasonable yeah. for doing that to them, you know, but to have two thirds of our incoming phone calls be from parents of young children, mm -hmm. 30 years ago, I'd have told you, I have no idea what they're talking about. And I have mm -hmm. no idea what this, what this craft born of a patriotical, uh, patriotic warrior society had mm -hmm. any business on these precious little youngsters that we're all training to protect, you know? Sure enough, I, I, I could not have been more wrong. And, uh, you know, it was a deep dive, deep study, and, and a lot of learning about child development, child psychology needed to take place. Um, I would argue this is how you want to choose the experience for your child is to have a, a person uh, in front of the room who doesn't just have a whole bunch of trophies on the wall, but has, uh, you know, real hopefully they've been a parent and you can find out how their kids are doing that's the you know that's job one and yeah. if you go to the website of my dojo you'll see all of our instructors talk about their own kids and that, that's mm. by my request and, and and i when i invite someone into the teaching staff they have to understand how humans work right mm. they can't because you you know i'm sure as well as i do when you're in your pajamas and bare feet having people bow to you all day, you, it, it's possible to come out thinking that you know what you're talking about. And, <laughs> and our, our profession requires us to be in the opposite place, to yeah. always practice. Uh, so Shinni Kairu, as my teacher described it, uh, the beginner's mind and understanding that there's always more to learn, right? Galileo. Absolutely. I, I think it was Galileo who said, um, you know, you become, this is the first of many quotes I'll butcher today, but mm -hmm. <laughs> you become, uh, you become wiser, you, 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 you become more knowledgeable as you learn how ignorant you really are. Yeah. Right. So, so every time you gain a little more knowledge, you see how much more vast the universe is for you to kind experience. of the flip side of the Donner Dunner Kruger Dun, Dunning Kruger <laughs> the Dunning Kruger effect, effect. yeah kind what? of the opposite of that <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you, and you and I can yeah. spend a lot of time on that topic mm -hmm. in our divisive country right now yeah. where you know people see a 12 second police video mm -hmm. and think they've seen everything they need to know to judge how a police force 
uh, is being managed, you know, yeah. or see, um, you know, uh, you know, quite on the other side, you see someone who has an unfortunate turn of words while a cell phone is on them, and they're accusing someone on the left of being less than pragmatic in their thinking, and their entire, they become defenestrated. Their, their entire career is deranged as a result of it. And, mm -hmm. you know, recently I've been watching um, old political talk shows. And, and I, would, <laughs> I would encourage your viewers to do that just for a little peace of mind. Go back mm -hmm. into the early 90s and 80s and watch William F. Buckley, mm -hmm. you know, having, having a debate on, uh, you know, on, uh, or even the 70s, the Vietnam War with Noam Chomsky, for mm -hmm. example. And you will see how two people at polar opposites who are highly educated can have a meeting of the minds and be nothing but respectful to each other, loathing one another's positions, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, giving, giving each other the benefit of the doubt as, as they help one another proceed through the other person's argument. That's, that's the way that's, we, that's what this. And that's one of the things I've appreciated about the uh, martial arts community in general. We tend to have opinionated people and often it's from two polar opposites of the spectrum. You have the the guy who learned in the military and is probably in law enforcement now and tends to skew very much to the right. Mm -hmm. And you've got the hippie who wanted to take Aikido or Capoeira <laughs> and is very much to the left. Right. And, but, and they are very passionate about their views, but because of the common thread of, of martial arts and the respect it in, involves, and also the real possibility of being punched right in the face if you get too out of line, the conversations remain respectful because of all of those factors involved. Yeah, um, and it's also a fantastic mm -hmm. element of the dojo presence that you, mm -hmm. uh, this is the way I describe it to my students, is you you come, mm -hmm. you know, we're required to bow before we enter the mm -hmm. floor and and as we exit the floor. Well, why? What, what, <laughs> does the floor have a clue that you're doing? Yeah. That? You know, no, mm -hmm. it's for you. It's for you. Yeah. Right? And that mm -hmm. bow, we were, um, we are encouraged, uh, Mr. Yueki, uh, former uh, head of the JKA, uh, said that when you, I shouldn't say former, I should say when I was in the JKA, he said that you, when you bow, you should inhale, keeps your back straight, at the bottom, exhale, inhale again, and then inhale as you come up. And that not only gives you a good posture and invites you to be lower, which is more respectful, but it also slows you down, right? And it lets you leave everything in the outside world out there and practice, I am defending myself, I am wide awake, I have 360 degree perception, 100% of the time I'm on the tatami. And when you're in that state, and your mouth isn't going blah, 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 blah. None of us are doing that, are we? We're all, we're all you know, in, in, in she's in Thai, we're all totally awake and engaged to our core. Now we are literally being the best person we can be. We're listening and we are receiving. And that, that my friend, is if it, when we can cultivate that practice, when I'm listening to you, when I hear somebody say, I fought for this country and we're losing it. I now know to shut up, <laughs> to, to put my agenda down here for someone that's half my age, you know, and really absorb mindful listening, really, really absorb what they're saying. And now I can deliver beautiful words because I got news for you. We're not going to fight. We're not, we're just not, we're, I mean, I, yeah. I'm not going to fight. Mm -hmm. I've got a thousand ways to not fight. Yeah. You know? And, and I think I think that's especially important in among in the Westerners who choose to practice martial arts. You got a lot of high speed, low drag, aerodynamically efficient, A-type personalities <laughs> for whom the idea of intentionally slowing down is utterly alien. Yeah but so important and also for kids, especially for our children, there's this epidemic of hurried, anxious children. 
who been, who are being raised by hurried, anxious parents. And Brilliant. again, that experience of just sitting, taking that moment to bow, taking the deep breath and changing, intentionally changing the pace, which then they can, with that practice, take into school, have a better time in school, not necessarily need to getting on the medication cocktail that is, seems to be the default for a lot of uh, pediatricians and teachers right now, and do better on tests, have a better time socially because they're the chill, calm person in the room. There's a lot of benefits to martial arts. And it's, it's that it's a kind of ironic thing where you, when you were describing your teacher earlier, you didn't mention even one time how many asses he kicked. It was the human being he was and the inspiration he was. And that's, and that's, the, and that's true of every serious martial artist I know. And it can be true of our kids in their classroom where that, that 13 year old, 14 year old black belt. And there are people who poo poo that I'm not one of them. You just understand that things are what they are, where they are, when they are. Yeah. But he's also a leader in his classroom, often a very mellow leader. He's the, he's the one that demonstrates that calmness under pressure. He's the one who, if there's a fire alarm, is going to lead by example, be the first one in line exactly. and all of those things. And those are the benefits, those, those hidden benefits of martial arts. That's right. Uh, you mentioned, yeah, you, you presented kind of a list of topics. And one of them was that warriors in a garden idea. Although I do have to say, because you're a fellow nerd, every time I hear that it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in the war, my response is always, Sam Gamgee would like a word. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to hit pause. I need to go think, and I'll be back because that was way too good of a comeback. Now, unfortunately, it's a sliver. <laughs> there's a sliver yeah. of an audience to which we can deliver it. Yeah. Uh, but oh man, well done, Jason. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> he did carry Frodo up a Mount Doom. So yeah. whatever you, it's like whatever you say, Sam. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well met. <laughs> yeah. What's the? There's something that came across my desk. We're we're digressing far. I do apologize, listeners, but that's that's how it's going to be when nerds get together and talk. But uh, about how young women like Legolas because he's pretty. <laughs> women who are getting it, who are getting on a little bit, they like Aragorn because he's competent and he's sexy. Mature women, they like Sam Gamgee because he's nice and he can cook. <laughs> 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 That's right. And I have many stories about having actually made the food mm -hmm. that, from mm -hmm. the Lord of the Rings cookbook that Sam inspired. But again, yeah. Right, right. yeah. When you're on but the this trail, concept it comes out pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. But this concept of warriors in a garden, yeah. and this is the real benefit of studying traditional martial arts. I think to a lesser extent, martial arts in general teach many of those things. But the traditional martial arts, you know, they, they label it, they name it, and it's an inherent part of the curriculum. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, listen, I, you know, we're, you're right that we're spending exactly no time about training hard, um, force of power effectiveness, understanding how your core connects to your technique, the importance of flexibility, the importance of, absolutely. I, they, that's, that's the, that's the threshold. That's, that's the, that's, you know, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's kind of like uh, if somebody walks into your dojo and you're running a dojo where your classes are excellent mm -hmm. um, and then they leave the dojo and you're absolutely perplexed because your classes are excellent. Well, yes, but your classes being excellent is the minimum. That you, if your classes can't be excellent, if your training can't be excellent, if your physicality can't be excellent, what are you even doing in this, <laughs> in this role? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. no, that's the minimum. That's the minimum. We all have to strive and be hard. And, you know, my knuckles are plenty swollen from punching the makiwara. We, we all understand that. What we're trying to do is make the world a better place, right? That's the goal here. You know, the, the, the mentality is it, once I know I can do something hard, right? Karate. Well, 
what can I really do? What, you know, am I really going to go in this room and, and, and do this thing in this perfect setting in this cube, you know, of like a yeah. racquetball court and then leave it and think I'm all that. Is that, is that the limit of, of, of what I'm here for? And I would argue that all of us have more to offer than that. So, you know, what, what, I know that we've tried to do is we've tried to instill that mentality. You mentioned about what a child who practices martial arts is capable of, even in their own contained world, even in the school system, very, very shy children. I mean, I've had children join the school and, and, and not a few, many join the school who whose parents bring them there because the parents are, you know, 30 and and they're 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 trying to figure this stuff out and the child is diminutively shy as i was i was paralyzed with shyness when i was young and it's something i i addressed in a big way in my middle teens but it took years i, I could just tell you horrifyingly embarrassing stories of my own perception of the world at that age and we've had children join who not only wouldn't be able to come out and join us on the floor, they couldn't even sit in our seats that are surrounding the floor. Mm -hmm. They'd be, we've built a soundproof child playroom where younger mm -hmm. siblings can be themselves and there's mm -hmm. glass, double pane glass that the parents can watch the one on the floor. Oh, nice. We've had them hiding in there and walk, oh. you know. Mm -hmm because and you know snuggled up next to mom and there's one i'm thinking of now who just uh received his red belt as a ninja nice. as a granite yeah. forest dojo ninja who mm -hmm. you know this this little boy I, i'm telling you it was a big deal this kid mm -hmm. is going to be the one you describe he's going to be mm -hmm. the one who's not imposing his will on other people in mm. class, but is instead leading by calm example. And that's exactly where we all want to be. I mean, Ma Sensei Okazaki would say, we are here to practice Budo. The proper translation of Budo is stopping conflict. That's what mm. we do. We stop it. We stop conflict. Mm. Well, you know, now, now that you describe it that way, I can talk to a child about how, you know, if there's a group of kids that are hanging out on a corner on your walk to school this way, leave 10 minutes earlier and walk that way. Congratulations, you just practiced Budo. And one day you'll find a way to talk to those kids. One day. But right now we're just stopping the fight, man. And that's what that's what it is. And it it uh it lets you feel that you're in control. You're in, you're in control yeah. of your space, you know? Yeah. It puts me in mind very much of that famous quote by uh, Dan Gable, the, you know, the, the, in the famous wrestler about once you've wrestled, everything else is easy. Yeah. And that That's meeting that, and I think for kids, especially that habit of, so there's the, the kick or the kata or the thing, the one thing it's really hard and you get up and the first time you do it, you suck at it. Yeah. And there's so many other places in life where if you suck at it, you have permission not to do it anymore. But right. in karate, you know, he goes in and the next day because he practices a little bit better than the next day. And once you, once you do that one time and then you, the fight, you finally deliver that really nice kick, nothing's ever perfect, but it's really close and it's awesome and you feel it. You know, you feel it right here when you do it right. Yeah. And then you know how to do this thing that three months ago, four months ago, six months ago was impossible. And to grow up, in a with that experience happening on a repeated basis i think as you say it really does prepare that child for immense success in other things because they now know that sucking at it your first time is not a barrier to success that's right and uh yeah the way we say it is you know once you've been punched in the face ten thousand times mm -hmm. which you've experienced somewhere in the intermediate ranks green belt yeah. purple belt you know, you, you've been, you've, you've blocked so many things to your face mm -hmm. that you notice that there's that threshold, right? Well, then 
as you become more advanced and, and more worldly, mm -hmm. you realize that, well, what's on this side of the conflict? On mm -hmm. this side of the conflict, you know, so here's the, here's fisticuffs, right? On this side of the conflict is everything else that we spend 99.9% .9 of our time doing. So mm -hmm. what do you want to fill that with? I would argue you want to fill it with grace. You want to fill it with generosity. You want to fill it with smiles, hugs, love. That's what is makes us our best cooperative as a species. You know, that's that's the stuff, man. And yeah. and and if you you know, I think it's ninety two percent of all physical engagements can be classified as a duel. Mm -hmm. a duel right hey hey you know fill in yeah. fill in sentence here my girl my beer my spot yep. my car in the lane my 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 mm -hmm. As, the moment you can drop your attachment to that mm -hmm. cunt mm -hmm. that you can laugh about it you start to realize i can look at the most hostile person in the world and find a way to, I tell my, I tell my guys going for their black belt exams. I'm like, I'm telling you, when you're in that fight, whoever smiles wins. Mm. You can find a way to smile when you got that guy wanting to take your head off. You're going to win. You're going to win. It was like what um, Rory Miller's favorite knife defense mm. is not being the kind of guy someone wants to stab. Exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that brings us to a, another point that you mentioned mm. in our outline about Makuso, mindfulness meditation and how but how important that can be to not being the kind of person who people want to stab or, you know, <laughs> since we're dealing with kids, you know, that's, that's tongue in cheek, but being the kind of person who can have an opportunity for a fight who walks out of that fight. Yeah. Um, and so talk a little bit about Makusa mindfulness meditation. I'm really excited that you offered me mm -hmm. this chance, Jason. Uh, it's been, it's been the singular focus of my karate life. Uh, that leads the others, really, and behind which everything lines up. Um, so for many years, we would, in proper uh, Shotokan tradition, walk in, you know, all line up, all kneel down, say za, which means kneel, makso, which means close your eyes and meditate. Three breaths, we were told to do three breaths, but uh, most people didn't wait for three breaths. Makso yame, open your eyes and then start bowing and then get up and start warming up. Well, I'm telling you, I did that for decades. <laughs> and I started mm -hmm. to wonder, is it possible that there's more there that we're jumping past? Mm -hmm. And um, so I really got to enjoy uh, a deep study with uh, Thai Thich Nhat Hanh. He's a um, Vietnamese monk who was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize by Dr. King. He's, um, he's revered throughout the world for having taken Buddhist concepts. This is grounded solidly in Buddhism. I don't consider myself a Buddhist, but as I told you, my, uh, you know, my dogma detector is always on alert and I have yet to hear something that I don't find deeply useful, profoundly true and worthy of deep study. So now when I lead a class and say, Seiza Makso, I don't even know when I'm going to say Makso Yame. I, I know that it's when I know I've arrived. I know I'm here. So I'll use the tool of my breath. I'll come to my breath. My breath can only exist in the present moment. The argument I had with my business partner or my, you know, friends, that's or, the, or the, mm. the joke I just heard or whatever it is, I'm mm. up here. And then when I know I've arrived and I know I'm home, makso yame. Mm. And I try to do that when I bow to you. I try to do that. I try to do it always. I try to be fully present. I don't always succeed. Don't get me wrong. I, <laughs> you know, we're all on this journey, but that is the mission. Uh, that's mm. the, that's the concept that, yeah. even young children can do. In fact, if you're game, I can do something with your mm -hmm. uh, viewers right now, if you'd like. Very cool. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Very good. So 
if everybody would just take a look at their hand, right? And realize what are the chances of 300 million years of evolution getting you this incredibly complex thing that serves your needs at all times, right? So you're gonna take your hand and then you're gonna take the index finger of your, your other hand and put it right there, right in that spot. And now what I'm going to challenge you to do is trace the entire outline of your hand, right? But here's the trick. Mm -hmm. Go up on an in-breath and down on the out-breath. But you can't move your finger faster than you're breathing and you can't change your breathing. You have to let your body do its own natural breathing as if you weren't doing this. All right, so let's all start here. Ready and go. And then when you get to the bottom of your palm on the other side, go the other way. Ah, <laughs> Not nice. that it puts me very much in mind. My my experience with moving meditation or mindfulness meditation is from kata, where I'm just barely bright enough to do a kata with some approximation of correctness. I'm not bright enough to do that while also thinking about the fight I got into with my wife or my to do list. And right. so, uh, and yet, and that's I think that's an experience for a lot of people. That's exactly that they're what they're doing said. exactly yeah. what they're doing and the only what they're doing. Yeah, um, you that's... mentioned Thich Nhat Hanh and uh, his, <clears throat> as a parent, his essay about washing dishes is yeah. I've found so helpful both for myself and for my kids and for the sometimes admittedly boring moments of parenting. Mm -hmm. And just the, the summary of it is that we all think we hate hand washing dishes, but we don't really hate hand washing dishes. We hate missing out on what we're doing while we're hand washing the dishes <laughs> but when we sit and actually get mindful and attentive about doing this task for the household and expressing your love for the household in that way and in the having your hands in the nice warm soapy water and the objectively gratifying task of having a pile of dirty dishes which turns into a pile of clean dishes that's an inherently enjoyable almost magical thing but we're too busy worrying that we're not in the other room with the other adults drinking wine or <laughs> not getting to that report that's due that we have to, or whatever it is, to experience that. And as a parent, there's so many moments of parenting that, that are right on the, net, the head of that nail. Is a, <laughs> and I think that one's in his book, Pieces Every Step, for parents who are more interested in learning more about this. Yeah, I've read so many of his books. I mm -hmm. honestly couldn't possibly tell you what is in yeah. which book. But um, mm -hmm. but I, you are talking to a very advanced, very high level dishwashing hater. <laughs> I, can, I can spend a great amount of time. I'm convinced mm -hmm. that dishwashing machines mm -hmm. are proof of uh, ancient astronauts because there's no <laughs> way civilization could have advanced without them. But, um, <laughs> but mm -hmm. when I say advanced, what I mean is I, ha mm -hmm. I have taken that, you know, so I'm washing my dishes. Mm -hmm. And when you say parent, it's perfect. And so I'll just go ahead and co-op that and say parent of myself. My, mm. the, the, the element of myself that's whining right now while the adults are having mm. wine, you know? And I'm like, I remember when I bought these dishes, 
I was with my partner. We were in a craft store. We have the means to visit a craft store mm -hmm. with a perfectly serviceable internal combustion automobile. We bought these things and paid way too much money for them, right? How foolish would they are, they are made by the hands of, of, a, of a talented person. How foolish would I be to complain that they have to be momentarily cleaned because I enjoyed using them, right? How <laughs> foolish am I to complain that I have to paint my windowsill on the home that I've worked so hard to have? You, you can just translate this mm -hmm. to any, you know, I have the skill to learn woodworking. In, in why is the 200 grit sanding paper, sandpaper bothering me more than the 400 grit or the 100 grit on either side mm -hmm. of it? You know, just, mm -hmm. you know, the, like uh, I am a really striving person. I, I'm always, when I die, I will be in the middle of some elaborate project for sure. But, but, I want, I've got to know that the joy lies in the involvement with right. those projects that I'm privileged to be a part of. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that if I can, can I just spin on oh, that please. for a moment? Absolutely. So, so that our dojo, uh, when I started it 21 years ago, I'd have told you that I wasn't really sure what it was going to be. If it was going to be a series of locations in a strip mall in, in a series of strip malls, if it was going to be, you know, what, what I really didn't, I really didn't understand. And now I can tell you, and for years I've been able to tell you that my students taught me what it is. It's a family. It, it, it's a family. I'm, I happen to be an only child whose parents are healthy, but live very far away. Um, and so to, and my children are all around the country as well. So, uh, you know, the, creation of a family just has been a theme my entire life and and so to see what we're really able to do together outside of the training even involving the training we have an annual kangeko uh special winter uh early morning training that is just to die for for a few days mm -hmm. it's just that it's i think it's one of the best training things that we do and we do it as a family we do it in a way that everyone mm -hmm. in the school regardless of rank can participate in and come out thinking what the heck did i just do you know mm -hmm. like that yeah. kind of hard effort then becomes mm -hmm. well what can you really do um yeah. uh and uh you know there's a great uh french aviator and poet and author, uh, Antoine de saint -Estupere, um, Estupere. Is the, the Little Prince guy. He wrote The Little Prince. That's his most famous mm -hmm. thing. He yeah. said, uh, and again, I'll, I'll quote all butcher, but he said, if you want to build a ship, don't gather up the men, collect wood, give them orders. Don't do that. Teach them to long for the open and vast sea. And that, to me, is, is the way to really understand what blessings you have on this earth, you know? So when I'm in the supermarket, got to go to the supermarket. Man, I'm out of fruit, you know? Got to go to the supermarket. Okay, so I'm there, and I can stop and know the vastness of the universe necessary for this extraordinary variety of foods from all over the world to be there for me to run in and grab. It's ridiculous. It's the utopia that our ancestors, they, they couldn't imagine what we have to complain about, right? So now I have this gathering of talented people and I say, guys, let's make our own dojo. You know, Let's see what we can do. And we did, and it's across the street from a park in our small town, and it is stunningly beautiful. We're busier than we know what to do with, and we've raised, we've done a lot for charity. Uh, I make everybody do a black belt project, uh, similar to an Eagle Scout, except harder. It's mm -hmm. something that takes a year to do, um, and that's regardless of age. Uh, you know, when you're hitting black belt, you're at least in your mid-teens, at least. Yeah. 
you know, so you're, you're, you know, you're capable of some stuff and I'm trying to prove to them. Yeah. You got to submit it in writing. This is, this is a business plan. You know, don't, don't mm -hmm. tell me you're used to getting your instructions handed to you from your high school teacher. I don't want to hear that. I'm, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm going to send mm -hmm. you back. And, uh, and we've come up with some fantastic projects to much funds donated to many different organizations, but we had a, a seven-year-old boy die um, from a from a pediatric brain tumor, and it changed all of our lives. We got very close with the parents, uh, created a foundation, and um, uh, we raised uh, about a quarter, over a quarter million dollars now mm -hmm. with the uh, Christopher Court Foundation. So it it really. Um, you know, it let us all stand up and say, guys, mm. come on, what, what can we really do? You know, mm. we can renovate a building, we can marshal dozens of people. We were, you know, trained for two years to ride our bicycles across the country. You know, we did, we just did like all these things that are available. You can read about all this stuff at, <laughs> at BruceCosta.com, <laughs> mm. but I don't, I don't want to bore anybody, but, but it, but it's not, mm -hmm. but it's not me and it's not, us it's all of us and it's what we're proving we're capable of and you got to ask the question what do you have better to do literally like look looking at that sentence in a mm -hmm. profound way i have nothing better to do than this mm -hmm. um, yeah. that's where you want to be man that's how you want to check and, out and it strikes me very much uh, i think i was talking to it was either Lee Wedlake Jr. or Bob White we were talking recently. And he, he said that on the whole, martial arts for kids, about, the, about as good as piano lessons or wrestling or football or whatever. Hanging out with martial artists is one of the best things kids can do Absolutely. for exactly what you're talking about because of that experience, because of the model mm -hmm. and, that, and that elevated idea of what you're capable of if you put your mind to it. Oh, yeah. And you're proving it yeah. by the fact that from the time you walk onto the floor, mm -hmm. nobody's allowed to have better sneakers than anybody else. Nobody's yeah. allowed to wear jewelry. Not everybody can mm -hmm. afford jewelry, yeah. right? We're all wearing the same plain white gi mm -hmm. and we are all at base level. Nobody knows what each other's degrees are in. Nobody mm -hmm. knows. It's, it's all I'm, I'm holding that 11 year old to the same standard as I am that 37 year old mm -hmm. you know, triathlete. Like uh, it's all, and, and frankly, the triathlete's harder to train always, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But tough guys with experience, you know, military mm -hmm. guys, cops, like they're always, always, because we got, we all want to get down to a zero base mm -hmm. and build yeah. from there, don't we? And flow through and mm -hmm. see what your body can do. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, we, we build up with all this stuff that we want to, mm -hmm. especially guys, you know, I've yeah. been with weights all my life and you want to, you know, I'm used to being able to <laughs> mm -hmm. fight, you know, strength my way through things. Well, no, yeah. man, try easy. Try doing it the easy yeah. way. Yeah. You do it right when it felt like you cheated. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I uh, <laughs> one one point on a uh, Moxo that I wanted to make sure the audience knew is that there's been some research over the last 10, 15 years about how beneficial it can be for kids, especially kids with anxiety or depression disorders, um, mm -hmm. sensory concerns, and um, autism spectrum. Uh, there's the the research has been un not unmitigated. What's the thing un I'm very clear uh, oh, right. that it's right. really, really good for kids, whether you do martial arts or not, whether your kid does that, just simply practicing mindfulness meditation can be, is immensely powerful for children. That's right. And it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be done in an austere way mm -hmm. either. And those, yeah. uh, those benefits you have, there's a book uh, right here. The Mind Illuminated um, by uh, John Yates uh, goes mm -hmm. into a lot of the stuff that you're talking about, the, you know, the proof in the pudding. Um, I would also uh, recommend uh, Dan Kahneman, uh, Thinking mm -hmm. Fast and Slow. This is mm -hmm. a classic 
on the way the brain works. And the, and the point I'm, the point I'm getting to is that yes, all of that evidence is there and it's growing. There's a ton of, of funding now available for that research. I would also um, uh, point people to Judd Brewer, uh, B-R-E-W-E-R. He uh, has done a lot of work with uh, mindful approaches to anxiety, overeating and, uh, or eating disorders, I should say, excuse me and um and smoking cessation right mm -hmm. but it's but it's all in a theme of habit habit patterns that are as a result of kind of the opposite of mindfulness so mm -hmm. <clears throat> the things you mentioned excuse me <clears throat> about children and the kinds of disorders mm -hmm. that we're seeing the kinds of anxieties that come from parents like me who try to <laughs> do the best they can for their children mm -hmm. by raising them differently than they were raised. We've mm -hmm. gone from a be home by dinner, you know, or be home by dark society to a I'm going to drive you to every one of your activities, mm -hmm. sit there while you do them society, right? And uh, about 20 years ago, I heard a psychologist, as I expressed that worry, say, you know, like, because you, you, back then in the 90s when, and, and early aughts when my kids were young, you know, we heard that all the time. We were all told to be home by dark. And I'm like, well, yeah, but you're not getting your butt kicked by the kid down the street that you got to face again tomorrow. You know, it's, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. so how do you think about this? And my psychologist friend said, well, um, you know, are they thriving? Are they thriving? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I got to tell you, my kids have been the definition of thriving. Um, mm -hmm. And so I kind of went with it. But now I've come to understand, uh, uh, especially through the work of Jonathan Haidt, uh, mm -hmm. his important book, The Coddling of the American Mind, um, how children who were born at I think the, the threshold year was 1996 and after, were coming of age right when MySpace hit. And mm -hmm. there's a lot that goes concomitant with that, but, but the, the basic idea is children are grown with Nerf foam around them now in ways that uh, keep them from learning to solve their own problems in ways that let us not worry so much. Mm -hmm. So it's like you said before, once you get punched 10,000 times in the head, you can deal with just about anything. Our kids aren't getting punched 10,000 times in the head. I was on a first name basis with the, you know, I live here in the middle of the woods so that my kids could get hurt. You could, mm -hmm. you could actually put it that way. And, yeah. you know, I was on a first name basis with the ER doc <laughs> at my <laughs> local hospital because of it. Yeah. And, you know, it, mm -hmm. it amounts to nothing compared to their capacity to go, if, if I could spend your morning talking about my children and their capacity to confront st strenuous situations in the world. And that's what we, that's the kind of adults we all need to be realizing we need to raise, you know? I mean, I'm all about courtesy. It, courtesy first, courtesy last, and courtesy all the way in between. But there's also, put your shoulders back, take up the space that you've been granted and do the thing that needs to be done mm -hmm. in this world. Yeah. There's that. And it's a bit of a, it's a superpower. If you're not only, you know, if you're the person who steps up and does the hard thing. Yeah. And even more, I think in some ways, the person who does the hard thing without hesitation. Yeah. It's yeah. you are, it's, you look like a superhero to the other people in the room. Yeah. And that gets back to some of the benefits of martial arts training for children, because they're, used to doing hard things yeah. things that are you know back when i ran my school i ran a school for about 10 years all told oh, wow. but when i was asked about about sparring mm -hmm. the thing is for kids with sparring you know <clears throat> sparring is not anything like fighting and again that's that's this myth that i wish was more firmly um eliminated from the culture mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. sparring teaches a kid two things First, mm -hmm. the kid's going to walk up to a line and he knows two things about the next 30 seconds to a minute of his life. Number one, 
the person on the other side of that line is a trained martial artist. And number two, that child is going to start hitting them as hard as, they, you know, as much as they can. And that, that's the safest place I've ever seen to train a child how to deal with fear. Yeah. Because it's, okay. and those hard things, doing them over and over again, things that are, that hurt, things that are a little bit scary in a controlled environment. That's right. Is, is really valuable. Well done. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. if I may, that's, mm -hmm. um, it's this, this really quite ties into this theme you and I seem to be uh, walking around that is being a uh, warrior in a garden and, mm -hmm. um, and this, this concept of, of mindfulness. So you're in this room and the thing you're practicing most, you can say, is shutting up compared mm -hmm. to the rest of your life. You're doing nothing but listening, nothing but absorbing. And the way I suggest that is, is to think about, don't, I'm not encouraging to lose your Americanism, your capacity. I mean, we all know what um, Japanese history and the, uh, the, the following of the leader brought. You know, if, if you've read anything about uh, kamikaze culture. Uh, my, uh, my mentor, Robin Riley, uh, has an excellent book on this where he, he does a deep dive into it. It wasn't just about flying planes into ships. It was about every element of s subverting your life, suborning your life to the cause of Japanese imperialism. And that that's certainly something that needs to be worried about and needs to be talked about. Yeah. But there's ways, that, and, and Japan has yeah. done a lot of work to understand this. There, there's ways to understand why that happened. Yeah. There's another thing that we as Americans who are used to our individuality and our you know, entrepreneurship yeah. and our innovation and, our, and the kinds of their bootstrap way of thinking, all of that can apply, but I can also mindfully park it. It's only an hour for mm -hmm. God's sake, two at the most. Mm -hmm. I can, I can put this aside. I can be a mindful listener. I can absorb everything. I already made the decision that this person in the front of the room is worthy of my attention. So I'm going to shut up. I'm going to absorb everything and I'm going to hear it deeply as if I was them, as if I was walking in their shoes. And later I can unpack it. I can disagree. I can quit. I can do all of those things, but Shoshini Kairu, beginner's mind, really do a deep absorption. And this is something that is profoundly available to children. So when you take your child and boom, you put them in front of this person that's saying, okay, sparring, you know, and in Shotokan, we really structure it, really structure mm -hmm. it. You're not doing free sparring until you're knocking on black belt. All mm. that time, years and years of, okay, step back, downward block. Now, step in and punch. Oizuki, Jodan. Announce, Oizuki, Jodan. Oizuki, Jodan. Stepping punch to the face. Okay, hi, I understand you're going to step punch to the face. I then step back, rising block, reverse punch. Mm. No fight in the history of humanity was conducted in that way. It will never happen in the real world, ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Why mm -hmm. waste our time? Because that kid's going to do 70,000 of those. Mm -hmm. And as he's doing it, the kinesiological lessons that are being put in the muscle memory of his body, that he won't know how to move his body in any other way than with ease if he keeps that up. I'll put, I'll go to a, to a non-denominational tournament and put our guys up against anybody else anytime we mm -hmm. always always have to be like whoa so the child does that stepping punch to the face right and invariably they're like mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> he just told me to step and punch this boy in the face or this girl in the face. And I, I don't dislike this girl, let alone, I don't, I don't even have the courage to talk to this girl. <laughs> I mm -hmm. have to punch her in the face, you know? And then you're mm -hmm. gonna hear the teacher say, look, I mm -hmm. want you to take 
her head off. I want that mm -hmm. punch to be your whole life depends mm -hmm. on that punch. He's going to hear me say that for years and it's mm -hmm. ridiculous. And I'm telling you in 21 years, I've never had an insurance claim. Not once. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, not only has nobody gotten hurt, <laughs> well, mm -hmm. people get hurt, but it's yeah. guys like you and me, Jason. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Oh, uh, oops. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You know. And his response is, "Oh, good one. Good one. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Oops. You know. Yeah. But if you want to be able to train with the guy the next day, you're not just going to yeah. take his head off. That's just yeah. that's terribly unrealistic in media. No, yeah. man. One shot. One shot. It's going to change your entire afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> so we're very the exercise yeah. of self-control mm -hmm. being foremost standing right behind courtesy right that's why you know you're being courteous yeah, yeah you're exercising incredible self-control that's an, a direct invitation for deep introspection for deep self-awareness and that's the secret sauce absolutely yeah. i wanted to also when you were mentioning about that deep listening that happens in a karate lesson mm -hmm. uh the power of taking that same deep listening as a parent and turning it on your child. So when they come home and they talk about their day or they talk endlessly about Minecraft or whatever it is to giving them your full attention and just actively, mindfully, powerfully, deeply listening to them with that beginner's mind. It has, it's, a, it's an undersold, underserved parental skill that again, martial arts teaches you as a as a basic foundation it really does my friend and and uh that's why you bow that's why mm -hmm. you bow you're gonna mm -hmm. you get that little three full say take mm -hmm. three full say check how fast you can bow you can bow yeah. in far less than a second take mm -hmm. three full seconds mm -hmm. to bow do that for a year and you will be the person your spouse wants to be married to Mm -hmm. yeah and children want to have as a parent yeah. yeah yeah i think benny i think it was benny the jet i heard this second or third hand had a meditation that he would do when he got home from work mm. uh before he put his key in the door he would sit and he'd he would i'm not sure if he actually bowed but he would do three breaths of okay i'm leaving what's outside the house behind and when i walk through this door the only thing is my wife and my kids and it was a, it's a beautiful thing that I've, I successfully did for a while, but now I work from home. So I don't have that physical, <laughs> that physical it's work. very, it's yeah. very difficult. That's why we call it a practice, yep. right? We don't call it a mm -hmm. done <laughs> and stuff changes. <laughs> I've not know? heard that before, but I'm stealing it. <laughs> Please plagiarism <laughs> is encouraged, but, but you know, it's, it's just mm -hmm. not possible for us to know in advance everything that's going to challenge our lifetime of habit patterns. Mm -hmm. And our children and our spouses and our friends are watching us. Thich Nhat Hanh said, mm -hmm. we only ever do three things. We only ever think, speak, and act. That's it. That's all we do we should do them <laughs> mindfully you know? and i just i love what you said no cell phones at the dinner table oh please it's <laughs> they are the most addictive substance we've ever created mm -hmm. and we, my you know whatever we need to do to understand that you know the mistake the mistake is when we say no no i'm fine no no i'm just checking this no no this is the no, the mistake is, ah, I am susceptible to this mm. creature and it is gone from me because I love you. Mm. That is where <laughs> we are doing our best, you know? Where the the, uh, the converse is teaching our kids that the, you know, the little rectangle is more important to us than they are. Uh, That's great. I was, there was a, I can't remember where I read this, but somebody pointed out that, and again, we're going to make a Lord of the Rings joke. And when I'm doing this, I look so much like Gollum stroking the ring. Uh, <laughs> I was like, 
Uh, you know, you, that's, I don't like how good a point you just made. I see myself in this photo and I don't like it. <laughs> it's fantastic. And we can be observant, can't we, of yeah. what the optics are externally mm -hmm. versus what our subjective experience is. Mm -hmm. So when you're on your phone, it's not that you're on your phone. It's that you're looking at what task awaits you next what email you just received, what social media calling you just felt. So that's the subjective experience. And, and what I urge people to do is to every extent possible, eliminate notifications, make mm -hmm. them all go away, for, certainly on social media, you know, and have a time when you check in with your friends. Mm -hmm. But beyond that time, you know, you, we all get to train people that they can't reach us. Whenever someone tries to send me a Facebook message, I say, dear friend, here's my email. I, mm. I, tr I try to hit Facebook once a week. And, mm. <laughs> and, it, and it should call me no more often than that. Because what's the, because I've been there, you know, I've been there where I'm lo looking at it several times a day. I wrote the funniest thing. I can't mm -hmm. wait to see what my friends think of my job. I created a meme. Guilty. I got, I got yeah. to see what they've done, you know. Oh my God, it's the worst, it's the yeah. worst idea. <laughs> you know, compared to the beautiful presence of people mm -hmm. that we're actually engaged mm -hmm. with. That's, that's, that's what we all want. And being seen by our kids to prioritize our interactions with them over our interactions with some stranger we disagree with on the internet. Yeah. Um, I'm terribly guilty of that. If anybody looks at my social media feeds, man, I argue with strangers on the internet way more than is healthy. <laughs> but and and we're coming to the end of the end of our time, and we haven't even talked we haven't talked that much about the book directly. So I want to definitely get to a couple of the most important ones, important aspects of the book. And one of them was I just love the postscript in the book about I don't want to do that to anyone. Oh, and it's I think it's. It's not only one of the core <laughs> hidden secrets of why martial arts is so great, but also uh, overcomes one of the most common objections I hear from parents to the idea of enrolling their children in martial arts. So if you could, uh, would you mind summarizing it a bit, give a bit of a teaser? Oh, not at all. Um, to support what you're saying, the, it's mm -hmm. the nuclear deterrence concept, right? So imagine a fourth grader, that's probably, right at the tip mm -hmm. of when kids are starting to approach puberty, they're involved in athleticism, the, you know, there might be someone who's pressuring them at home and making them feel that they can exhibit that pressure on their friends in the form of physical mm -hmm. bullying, right? And, and they, you know, imagine a kid who has someone like that picking on him and can say, you don't want to get hit by me <laughs> because he has nothing but thousands of repetitions of evidence of what it will be like for the other person if he does get hit by him. That elevation off the tarmac of the immediacy of the duel, what a gift, what a gift mm -hmm. to our children. So even with that fundamental awareness that, that that's available to a child all of us as i was saying before can be smiling more um and this is just something i've obviously spent so much time thought talk thinking about because i've had the good grace to live in the northeastern united states at a time that has never been safer it has never been safer Forgive me, I'm going to say it again, <laughs> because this is available to everyone. You know, on the FBI.gov website, you can look up any statistic you want. And <clears throat> there's many famous charts. Stephen Pinker, uh, <clears throat> in, his, in his great book, The Better Angels of Our Nature, um, that, you know, he just points how over and over and over again in our society, we're seeing how it's never been a safer time to be a woman 
in the United States. It's never been a safer time to be a black person in the United States. It's never been a safer time to be an Asian in the United States, you know, people of Asian ancestry in the United States. All of these are statistically true. Now, one of the problems I have is that we're not dealing with the real truth of the fact that all of us spent hundreds of thousands of years in tribes of people that looked like us, tribes in size between 25 and 125 people. Nowhere was there, you know, prior to very recently in human history, mm -hmm. was it a norm to see people who look, speak, sing, dance, eat differently than the people you've spent your entire life with. And here we are in America at the tip of the spear of what we all want. I think that the mindful thing to do is to recognize, mm. my God, all of us are xenophobic. All of us. And we mm. must take measures against that. Mm. I never see that honest, that level of honesty in a conversation. Mm. And so when you realize that most conflicts are a result of, you know, it, it, were, were I to get in a physical conflict, I'd have to ask, how many things did I do wrong that resulted in that, right? We all want to create this fantasy of, well, a guy, you know, jumps, you know, turns around and hits me at a bar. Well, what the hell am I doing at a bar where a guy's going to turn around and hit me? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I go on road trips all the time where I'm, I can't find enough bars where there hasn't been violence in them in generations. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to do, you know? And, yeah. and so I don't want to be the person that walk. That's the world as it is. That's the evolution we have. We're in the society we're in. We have the rule of law and the problematic outcomes of class discrimination, race discrimination, religious discrimination, all of, absolutely. But what I'm trying to say is, unless you believe that, say, Germans had a, uh, you know, genetic predisposition to uh, being programmed to be Nazis. If you think that's not available to you, you're kidding yourself, you're mm -hmm. kidding yourself. And so we all need to get our heads around the fact that we co-opted vast and differentiated cultures from Africa and the West Indies and brought them by force and limited them. And now we have these, you know, disparities and well, these 13 fold disparities in wealth between African American families and Caucasian American families. We have all that to grapple with, but we're not going to do it by just being horrified when someone, you know, when, when your mom doesn't like rap music, that's mm -hmm. not, you know, your mom's never going to like rap music. It doesn't have to like rap music in order to vote against redlining, in order to do the things that are going to give our society the kind of equanimity. So that's really what I mean when I say, I don't want to be the kind of person that punches somebody out and sees it as a solution to a complex problem. And that's a message that can be given to children. I, I just society is complicated it's hard it takes learning and humility and kindness and, and courage that, absolutely and that's all available on the tatami on the and that's some um, and there there what's where this there's not some metaphor it's a there's a connection there uh but where when you're on the tatami when you're on the mats you will be told 10,000 times, uh, you did that wrong, to uh, change it like this, right. to the point that you're completely inured to it. Uh, yeah. my, you, know, you and I have both worked in publishing. That's been my main career for the last 10 years. My wife's a literary agent. And oh, what I've noticed is the, um, you know, I've, I've spoken at writing conferences for a long time. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the grown-ups table where the speakers at the conferences are, most of them have a athletic, drama or music background 
They're the people who are inured to being told, you did that wrong, do it again. And I think you see the opposite of that in the political discussion right now, where there's a lot of resistance to accepting the fact that, although it is the safest time right now for any demographic, there are some things that are really messed up and need work. And you can see those people who, have, who don't have that background on the matter being told, uh, that's wrong, do it better, do it, do it this way. Mm-hmm. And they respond immediately to the suggestion that it's even a little bit wrong with this immense defensiveness and oh, America's, I love America and I do love America. <laughs> America's the best, we don't need to change the darn thing. Because, and I think that one of the ways that we raise children who don't have that response is having them on the mat being told, shift your foot 45 degrees. No, 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 that caught up, it's, that's an upward block, not a downward block. And so they just get, so you're used to looking at a situation, accepting that there are problems, accepting that you have responsibility for those program problems, and then moving forward with courage and competence. Oh my goodness, it's, it's so beautifully said. I mean, put it this way, here's the, here's the magic, the magic uh, mm-hmm. incantation. How long do you want to spend being wrong? <laughs> I want to be, <laughs> when I'm wrong about mm-hmm. something, I want to, I want to be corrected as soon as humanly possible. <laughs> there's mm-hmm. a, be- there's a beautiful book uh, called being wrong. And I'm mortified to have forgot. I'm searching my, this is just, this is all the stuff like I've just most recently read yeah. the process <laughs> down to my ridiculous library. But um, yeah. uh, there's a uh, there's a book called Being Wrong, and uh, the mm-hmm. woman who wrote it uh, did wonderful research on the topic. Uh, has a TED talk. It's quite interesting. Mm-hmm. She says, "Think back to the last time you um, think back to the last time you were found out you were wrong about something, right? And you realized, ah, oh, and it changed your mind, right?" Mm-hmm. Rewind five minutes before that. What did that feel like? She says, <laughs> it felt exactly like being right. <laughs> so what gauge are you? What possible gauge are you on your own opinions? <laughs> well, you've done that thing, right? Where there's a conversation and someone corrects you and so you go. Oh. oh. <laughs> and then you're like, oh. oh crap, right. Yeah. And here we are as a nation practicing <laughs> this. And what do we end up with? Mm-hmm. 37th in healthcare, mm-hmm. 17th in mm-hmm. mathematical skills, 14th in literary mm-hmm. skills. Do we have history skills? I'm pretty sure we don't. So <laughs> if yeah. I want to learn American history, I talk to my friends in the UK. They learn more about mm-hmm. American history than we do. Yeah, my it's, wife's Canadian and it's true over there too. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. So yeah. that's the thing is to, to walk through a life like that, yeah. where you only have stuff to learn, mm-hmm. where if somebody tells mm-hmm. you to rotate your rear foot forward, get, let's get your feet pointed to where you're trying to go. Mm-hmm. Stop using it as a stop. Use it as a go. You know, mm-hmm. when you can hear that and you can say, oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you, sensei. Thank you, senpai. Thank you. thank you holy oh my gosh how much more efficient are you going to be at growing yeah it's another superpower in its own way of course it is of course it is (laughs) well bruce thank you so much for coming on the show today i really appreciate it and the book will be available by the time this episode drops and it is welcome to karate unlocking the wisdom of the beginner's mind i was fortunate enough to read an advanced copy and it is well worth your time Absolutely, if you're interested in studying karate or if you have an experience, experience in martial arts. And honestly, even if you're not, the, you know, the, the values and the benefits of studying martial arts go well beyond kicking and punching. And there's, there's valuable insights in there for every parent. I'm deeply grateful to you, Jason. Thank you for your kindness and your hospitality. It's been great. Thank, thank you, Bruce. Take care, everybody. See you next time. Stay safe. Today's episode was brought to you by our heroes over at Patreon. Todd Elner, Beth Edwards, Douglas Sedeby, Hugh O'Donnell, Art Brick, American Institutes of Kempo, Beth Pratt, Richard Hubbard, Wayfinder Advantage, Kit Bradley, Lee Douglas, Amy Rivers, Neil Festine, Kate Carlson, Rom Payton, Jenny Coakley, and Chris Jordan. 
join the illustrious heroes by backing us at patreon.com slash safest family. If you can't, that's okay, but do consider liking us and subscribing here on YouTube or sharing your favorite episodes on social media. Even a little bit on your end can make a lot of difference here. Thank you for watching today. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.